Hello. I'm Leah. I'm Richard. Hello. Frankie. Hello, Barbara. Hey, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Bridget. Bridget, nice to meet you, Fatima. Hi, Fatima. Sure. What pronouns do you use? Pronouns? I don't know. She, her, they, them? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Your generation. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I, know. I understand. <laughs> I have a lot to learn about that. Yeah, I can, I can help with that. Good. <laughs> so I'm Marcia Gilbert. Um, I'm 62 the end of June. My name is Charles Valentino. My age, I'm 67. Wow, you look good. <laughs> I'm 28 years old. I'm an artist, originally from Atlanta, Georgia, now based here in New York, and I identify as a trans woman. It's very nice to meet you, Fatima. For me, I was a straight woman married and had four children with a partner who was a man. I totally identified as a, as a, in a heterosexual family way. And, and now as my life has grown and changed, I'm very proud to say I'm a lesbian. And, and, and for me, it's very important um, to feel that pride and not allow someone else's questions about how I could, you know, how do you change your sexuality or how do you do, you know, whatever. Um, it make me change how I express myself. I am from Brooklyn, New York. I'm 21 years old, um, and I use they, them, he, him pronouns. I'm trans mask, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things is a lack of trust of the older generation to be younger. That gap is just took away the conversation part, took away the part where we can actually come together and talk about the issues of our community. We seem to believe that there's nothing we can tell you because you're not gonna listen. Younger folks have so much more to learn <laughs> about um, the lived, ex from the lived experience of folks who have been in this country and, and were, grew up in a very different time when the climate towards LGBTQ plus folk was very different. You were coming up in a time to be homosexual was illegal. Yeah. yeah. You know, in the 60s were the riots, and then mm -hmm. there's the AIDS crisis. Yes. My first gay club experience uh -huh. was just 2012, okay? Oh, good. It was just seven years ago. You're a newbie. <laughs> I'm really a newbie. When I was a kid, there was really no positive word for being queer or gay. There was the term homosexual and homo, and those were really derogatory. Homosexual was kind of a technical term. Homo was like a really, really, um, it was like a diss. And there, was, there were no affirming words. And part of, you know, I still struggle because there are parts of that that are still inside. Um, so to kind of come to this point to accept myself and kind of and hold myself up in regard, um, and to know that the world will support me in that is a really extraordinary thing. Um, for me, for me, I think pride means, I think it means being the authentic version of myself all the time. And also owning the fact that who I am it's gonna change mm -hmm. and evolve mm -hmm. always. Yeah. I really feel strongly that um, pride is not just one month. It's, it's, it's how you carry yourself and how you live your life all the time. I would say that pride for me starts in the mirror um, about liking what I see there first and learn how to grow comfortable with myself um, unadorned from all of the titles that I may hold, but just learning to uh, find and keep the soul of me. Hmm. Pride for me is something that comes from within and can be celebrated by people around you. I came to New York in the early 80s and pride parades were a little different then. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a way to celebrate but we also can't forget that the reason we have the Pride Parade is because of what happened at Stonewall 50 years ago. So um, Pride to me has a lot of different layers. Stonewall is like 
the civil rights movement to me, I was in the city at the same, at the time that happened also. I think I can look back on it and see how important it was. But at the time it happened, which was 69, I was 22. It was like, who cares? Stonewall means a great deal to me. It, it occurred only three months after I came out. So in some sense, it was my introduction to the gay world. I think I'm still learning about Stonewall and trying to reconnect with the history that um, folks like me went through and lived through. Up until that point, um, gay bars were, were always raided and people were put into paddy wagons and taken away and booked and because it was against the law. I was there. <laughs> I was there that night that it all went down. We've had enough. This is it. This is it. <laughs> enough. I have this incredibly vivid image of, of a policeman standing with a stick in the air. They were beating people. It was really awful. When Stonewall happened, that was a really powerful moment that began a momentum of, of people coming together and, and, and owning their right to not just to exist, but to celebrate who they are and to be safe, to be able to be someplace where they could be safe. And they had to fight. Yeah, I think of names, Marsha P. Johnson, yeah. and Sylvia Rivera, Miss mm -hmm. Major. It was amazing, but we didn't know that you know, that was going to be the moment that it all exploded, you know? It was yeah. like, it was another night in the village. I think the kids these days uh, don't have the, the history or know as much about what's been going on or what really happened at Stonewall. Um, so um, I like it that the older generation <laughs> um, uh, has that to share. Um, I think it's the biggest difference between our generations is that, um, you know, like, like pronouns are very okay. important now. When you were my age, that was never a factor, right? That was not a factor. I think the biggest difference between our generations is, um, and I've, and I've observed this very closely because my son is the same age as you. <laughs> I notice in raising my children um, that they are far more free to hug and kiss and relate to each other without fear of a label. The world we live in now where there's so much more acceptance is built on the shoulders of folks that were exactly. there. So I feel grateful. I mean, when I, I, I can't even remember what I, when I was 21, it was really, um, it was less inclusive because the world, and the world was less inclusive. The world was much more of a kind of white, based on a white heterosexual patriarchy. True. It is a very male centric movement. I think that leaves both lesbians and trans women on the outside of it. It's wild how much attention we could give to rainbow flags, but not to, I think, dead black bodies, specifically black trans mm -hmm. girls. I mean, I joke with my friends, like, the last ism is ageism, which I get. When I was 21, I did not want to talk to a 67-year-old. It's just not, I mean, it's, I had nothing to do with me. And I think that there is, there has been a divide. The generational divides, yeah. the racial divides, yeah. the gender divides. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we still have to unify on. I think the older generations are like having like a harder time like getting used to it and like identifying people as like they, them. I'm gonna be the same person regardless of if I'm a man or a woman. I think personality and like how somebody is, like if they have a good heart, like that's all that really matters, not how they identify. I know people in my generation are, are grappling with that and trying to understand that knowing how we were prejudiced against that I, I certainly don't want you and your generation to be prejudiced against because of us. We lost the grandparent experience. The aunts tweaking to their nieces and nephews, the uncles. We, we've lost that, and especially within our communities. The thing about the, the more than, you know, the two, more than just the two genders that, that um, it's made me th think about myself in, in a way that I guess I didn't really... Think about yourself. You know, but the, the definition of being a woman 
was expanded. We won't know till we ask the question by having that conversation. And I feel like having moments like these where we can talk is the right step to make, just kind of bringing it all back together. This is step one. Definitely step one. Oh, I think you're wonderful. I think you're doing really well. It's oh. nice to see Thank you. young people that are yeah. really advanced in their thinking. Yeah. It's very lovely to have you. And check it out. Like and check it out. Okay. <laughs> I've made a new friend. Yes. <laughs> Like, we should go to Stonewall. I know, yeah, let's go to Stonewall for drinks. I'm done. Okay. <laughs>